Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chabarim. Let's get right into this. Is the white man, the so-called white man, speaking in these basic terms, right, in this Western Gentile world, is the so-called white man a Hamite? Is the white man a Hamite? That's it. That's the question right there. Is the white man a Hamite? Now we're going to give a disclaimer here as well as at the outro right here. Now, here we're using one of the um, what Nubian Islamic Hebrews on Sarullah, Dr. York. This is one of the books here. Now, some may dismiss it, you know, because, okay, it's Dr. York, it's Imam Isa. You, some of you might know about his story, so forth and so on. But yet, we have to admit this, that for many of us, back in the late 80s and early 90s, he was one of the points of reference for like black culture, black knowledge, things about black people that we didn't know about. His main focus was Islamic, was connected with Sudan and the Islamic kind of tradition. Many ones and ones know the Ansarullah, Imam Isa, Al-Hadi, Al-Mahdi. This is all before the later Eatonton, Georgia and the Nawapian, Nawapu. This is all pre all of that. Now, one thing is known is that a lot of these books that he wrote, Dr. York, a lot of the books that he wrote, right? I want to just show where we're going to point out some evidence, right? And now this evidence that we're going to point out, we have additional evidence to prove that the so-called white man or the Indo-European, his roots, right? When we consider the Bible and the biblical narrative, connects with the Hamites. Now, I know many people have been led to believe that, well, Ham, Ham is just a black man. They've been led to believe that Noah had three sons. Noah and his one wife, according to the Bible, they had three sons. One was black, one was white, and the other was gray, right? Or one, they say, was African. The other one was like European or white European. And the other one was like was was Asian or Asiatic. Even when we say Asia today, there's a difference of what Asia nowadays means and refers to than what Asia meant within an ancient context. But the subject matter here is that is the white man is the white man a Hamite? Is the white man a Hamite? Is the white man a Canaanite. Now, scientifically speaking, we know about recessive genes and dominant genes, right? And a lot of this can be researched and has been researched concerning who's who and humanity and, and either the evolution. And I'm pointing out the word evolution, but in the context of the evolution in species. In other words, from the ancient, we say primordial, we could say black, brown, reddish, brown man. From that primordial, we can say Lucy or Eve, you know, the African, what one's referred to as the African Eve, that we all came from the mitochondrial DNA. You know, now there's other DNA that has come in, right? They say that the Europeans have some other DNA that they have more exclusively, right, than, say, African or black peoples. Right? There's Neanderthal DNA, and some say, well, this shows that something happened with that DNA right there. But there's core DNA that points out that modern so-called white people, or what's called white people. In fact, a lot of people today that are called white people back in the 40s and before that was not considered white people. Now, of course, we're mentioning white rhetoric and white knowledge, in other words, the popular knowledge that we have been led to believe. So we're putting it into that context there. Now, we have been taught a lot of lies. Now, although we may say our black Lord and Savior and recognize the Hebrews and the Israelites and a lot of ancient peoples that we have been made to believe in the make-believe of white racism and white supremacy, we have been made to believe our white people that actually are not white people. I mean, we even see from ancient Egypt. If we look at a lot of old things of ancient Egypt from European culture way before, for example, look at some old things before they found King Tut's tomb. In fact, most of the real work they have been doing with ancient Egypt and Kemetic and Mitzrayim and finding out more real information is more recent 
especially with like the 1900s when they started to really find real ancient Egypt archaeology that was buried like King Tut and everything. So even the knowledge of Egyptology is fairly recent, but we look at some of the older books over the past 100, 200, and look in the European tradition, the Christian tradition, and in their tradition, we see how they have been like Steve Martin. Remember Steve Martin, Walk Like an Egyptian? Right? How they have actually, we can, we're going to show you this right here, where they actually, we're going to show you the wall paintings, at least what we have to show you. We don't know how they have damaged these wall paintings. And we're going to show you the pictures that they made before they had cameras to take the pictures. And you're going to see how they basically were drawing off of the Egyptian walls, but consciously or unconsciously was Europeanizing or whitewashing the features. They've done that before. So we know that the white man has made himself to believe and made other people believe he was both the cowboy and the Indian, you know, like in the movie where the white man plays the cowboy and Indian. So that's the context. We got to put it into the context of our consciousness. We've been led to believe that the only one who was black, right, was Ham. And that Ham was a black African, even though the term Africa, right, was not used for the whole continent until the Berlin Conference and thereafter. This is where the term Africa became popularly associated with the continent. We know that it was Ethiopia. We know that Africa actually was Tunisia and Libya. And yes, it is true. Those sounds crazy. But if you follow the historical, you recognize that what we're saying is right and exact. At one time, Egypt was not in Africa because Africa was only Libya and Tunisia from the earliest Roman times. Africa was Libya and Tunisia, and right next door is Egypt. So at one time when it was said that Egypt was not in Africa, that was true because the continent was not renamed to Africa. The only place that was called Africa was Libya, modern Libya and Tunisia. So I just want to point that out and let that sink in for a moment. All right? Because, you know, the truth is an offense, but it's not a sin. So let's come back once again to this particular point was, right, or is the white man a descendant of Ham? Is the white man a Hamite? Now, some, will, some are going to buck at what we're saying right here. They're going to buck at what we're saying right here. They're going to buck at what we're saying here because they're going to be saying that, oh, um, how you say the white man, you're trying to take away black history, black culture. But then on the next hand, you hear a lot of our people, a lot of our scholars and a lot of the pseudo scholars and others out there in black consciousness talking about actually white people come from black people. And some of them point to the the DNA, you know, the gene, you know, gene genome and all the gene research and the recessive genes. You know, we have the recessive genes and we have the dominant, right, the dominant genes. And we know that there is evolution in species. We're not talking about this stuff that we came from monkeys or whatever else, but there's evolution in species. Right. As we have with black people, right, the ancient black people and seeing among black people all the phenotypes. I mean, all the different facial phenotypes. And when we have the phenotypes of so-called Europeans, the angular so-called features, the long nose and all of that. We have that amongst our own black and brown people. Right. Prior to the white people coming on the scene as we have in this modern day and time. In fact, one particular article I have, I'd like to find that article again and share it with ones and ones. It was an article that written by some white scholars and they were actually saying that the white, the white man is like recent. They were trying to say how recent the white man is, like in the equation, that the white man is recent. In other words, that people being white as we have, quote, white people today, that is more recent, right? That's like a recent kind of an evolution within species, within the so-called human species, right? From the more dominant, right? We could say the black genes, the more dominant genes to the more recessive genes, right? So therefore, bringing it back to this particular question, was the white man a descendant from Canaan? 
And see, this is going to connect with the whole curse of Ham. What's called the curse of Ham is unbiblical. In the Bible, it says Canaan. And so how the white man has played in his movies, both the cowboy and Indian. All right, the cowboy and Indian. Many ones grew up probably thinking until they actually met real so-called Native American Indians or recognized that some of us as black people were also breeding, you know, with Native peoples and that many of them were also dark skinned and had woolly hair and many of the same features. So you had people over here in this North country that has similarities and features of people that were brought over here from the continent. All right, so I point that out right there to show, as J.A. Rogers and others of our historical great researchers said, wherever water touches land, you will find Ethiopians there to say you will find black people and the primordial, we could say, black man there. So here's the question again. Is the white man, right, a descendant of, Can of Canaan? Is the white man a Canaanite? Is the white man a Hamite? Is the white man a Hamite? Is the white man a Canaanite? Now here, a disclaimer, we're putting this Jehovah Witness article that was found in one of the um, Ansarullah, Nubian Islamic Hebrews. Later on, they would morph and evolve or devolve into the Nawapian sort of group. Now, one thing about what Dr. York or Imam Isa had a lot of his researches was the sisters and daughters and the woman. There was a lot of people who contributed to what Dr. York did. And in spite of some of his later, you know, abhorrent or even, you know, questionable, right, activities or what he has been accused of or alleged, so forth and so on, let's not dismiss that because many call him a plagiarizer you know they have ones like um what's his name um forget the brother's name right now but he's the one that got nuwapism nuwapism that that site where he breaks down how dr york imam isa had so-called plagiarized a lot of other information now that's the later dr york we're pointing to this work that was an earlier work Right. And here he is basically just quoting from Jehovah Witness. Now, this does not mean that we are Jehovah Witness just because we point to some evidence from a particular point of view of ideology, a religion, a denomination does not mean we are supporting everything else in that denomination. We are looking for those elements and those testimonies and evidences of truth. And we can back this up elsewhere. We're just beginning off right here 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 as we lean into this subject matter because it's a very important subject matter to touch on we have been led to believe that noah had three sons right according to what's written in the bible one was maybe an african or black one was asian whatever that means what does asian really mean right since what is called um asia minor no, Asia Minor is like Turkey, over there in Turkey. What's Asia Minor, in a sense, they call it the Middle East today. What's the Middle East today should be better named Far East Africa, using the terminology nowadays, Far East Africa. The Far East Africa is the so-called Middle East. And we know that the, the land masses were connected, right? Before the Suez Canal, these land masses are connected. So people went to and fro. Who is to say that the Hamites just settled in what we know today as Africa? It doesn't say that in the scripture. It's like the next one where they say, well, the Bible says that, that the earth is 6,000 years old. No, the Bible does not say that. Western European Gentile white people interpreting the Bible, I think it was Usher. I think it was Usher back in the days. Usher. Right, who went around the English countryside or Irish countryside. He went around the England, North Ireland, that area over there, and he started to look at rocks. And he looked at the Bible, and he says, well, six days, and then he connected to a day of the Lord is a thousand years. And he is the one that, and others agreed with him, that in their interpretation, the earth is 6,000 years old based on their interpretation of the Bible, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say, 
right, that the earth was 6,000 years old, right? It says that in six days, right, Elohim, right, created the heavens and earth. But it does not give any timeline. In fact, how do we rate time today? Just to ask the people, how do we rate time today? Time today is rated based on the movement of the heavens, the sun, the moon, the stars. That's how we count time. Right? The sun, like a day, right, is based on when the sun shines, you know, the 12 hours. They're not 12 hours in a day. Jesus Christ says that in the Bible, 12 hours in a day. The Bible says they will seek to change laws in time, right? So people talk about 24 hours, but we rate day and night based on, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars. According to the Bible, the sun, moon, and stars only became visible, if we're correct, what, on the third, the fourth day? According to the Bible, when you read the Bible. So that means how were those other days before the fourth day? It's on the fourth day, right? Genesis chapter 1, verse 14, right? Verse 14 to verse 19, where according to the Hebrew Bible, it gives us the sun, the moon, the stars becoming visible. It doesn't even say they were created then, but they became visible then. So that makes us ask the question, what happened to day one, day two, and day three? Right? Day one, day two, and day three. So from a time, as we count time today by the movement, the revolutions of the heavens, the earth, you know, the heavens and the stars, the sun, the moon, and the stars, that means that we can only say if it's a thousand days, the Lord is a thousand years, and we're counting day and night based on the movement of like the sun, the moon, and the stars, According to the Bible, it's only on the fourth day. That means those other days, right? How long were they? Right? How long were they? They said a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. Right? But even so, we cannot count those first three days based on the formula of counting time. I point that out because a lot of things people say the Bible says this and the Bible teach that and the Bible is saying that, that uh, uh, Ham is the black man out of Africa. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible just says that Noah had three sons. Noah and his one wife had three sons. But somebody has wanted us to lead us to believe and make us believe that one was white, one was black, and one was gray. This is where we have to begin, right, to re-educate ourselves. Now, how many, how many of y'all have seen this before right here? This is something I think the 12 tribes back in the days, the 12 tribes... Right, I think this is come from the 12 tribes right here, if we're correct. We used it in an older video. This is a screenshot of one of the videos we did over a decade or two ago. Ham, Shem, and Japheth. So here is a way of kind of like building up right on this Western Gentile, white European Christian, white European Christian Jew interpretation that one was a black man, Ham, and he went into Africa. Shem, he just dwelt in the Middle East. And Japheth just dwelt in Asia. I mean, Japheth just dwelt in um, the Mediterranean. You know, like, you know, like the, the Mediterranean and lower Europe. This is, this is what we're led to believe in. And then from that, they say, well, one was African, right? One was Asian and one was European. This is all according to the European or the white man's later day interpretation. The only thing the Bible tells us, the direct information that it really tells us, right, is that Noah had three sons. They were three sons of one man and one woman. That's what the Bible tells us. It tells us the geographical locations that they settled in. Right? But I can go into more detail in others as well, where these geographical, even with the Greeks and the Romans, the original Greeks and the Romans, or the original Ionians, Minoans, Ionians, Javanites, and Etruscans were also dark-skinned, melanated peoples. We could say, for the sake of the conversation here, they were black peoples. Right? And so this is going to be a little difficult, I think, for most ones and ones, because even though we recognize that they whitewashed and lied 
you know, about other things concerning race, you know what I mean, and who's who in the Bible and ancient history. I mean, if you believe them, then the ancient Egyptians were white people too, right? This is still one of the controversies, controversies to this very day. Ones are arguing what race was the ancient Egyptians, although we are looking at the, the, the monuments, we're looking at the wall paintings, we're looking at a lot of the art and facts, and we can clearly see that they were not European, latter-day white folks. We can clearly see that the ancient Egyptians were not. But still, there's the argument over what race they were. <laughs> So if they've done that there, we're saying that they've done that here too as well. So here, let's look at a few things concerning Ham, Shem, and Japheth. All right, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Okay, Ham, right? This is the one they say is Ham. Although from the monument, this is the Tarnesi. This is the Nubian people on the monument from Seti's tomb. This is, this, is, this is one of the places, excuse me, one of the places this is found from Seti's tomb, right? They said, are black people cursed? Right? So here's, the, here's what they try to do. They try to make us believe right, that Noah's three sons were three different races as we see different races today. Instead of the fact that these three sons were, for lack of word, for lack of a better word, were black peoples. Because black people come in all sort of hues, all sort of phenotypes. This should be clear to one that black people come in all sort of hues and phenotypes. See, the stereotype of what black being black is, like in, 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 in slavery, in Slavment, in slavery in the Americas, they put a lot of stereotype, you know, like big lips, buck out eyes, you know, like, you know, like, you know, the, the, this real caricature has been put out of black people. But then when we really start to look around, right, even look in our families, even though somewhat over here, you know, we were kind of like mixed up a little bit over here, our, our seed line. But then we can see other peoples around the world, right, that their descendancy, they know who their, their mother, their father, their mother, their father. So if a white man came along and bred, they kept track of it. Not like us, where a lot of our, we have a lot of broken links over here because of who we are and what we have gone through. So here I'd like to show a couple of revisioning of the whole Ham, Shem, and Japheth. The Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Here at the bottom it says the story of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, or Ham, Shem, and Japheth, are not, some say, literal people. Now, a question, were they literal people? Yes. Uh -huh. We say yes. They were both literal people, and also the figure, you know what I mean? The figure, they're both literal and figurative. They both apply. Like the word made flesh. The word is just a word. But now when that word is carried out, like you give me instruction to build something, right? That's still in the spirit. That's figurative. That's allegorical. Once I build and manifest that thing that you gave me the word on, I've manifested it in reality. I showed and proved. I gave the demonstration on it. It's manifest. That means that that word has become flesh or that word has become manifest. So some say they were not literal people. Right? It was just allegorical. But from a Hebrew and an Israelite perspective, they were both literal. The Hebrew, the law of the two truths. Right? There's the letter of the law and there's the spirit of the law. So they were both literal people and also we have the figurative the example. This is what we're dealing with right now when we're talking about the different nation and nationality. All we're saying is that, what it's saying coming up right here, it says they represent ancient description of three major genetic variations that branched out from the original black man and woman. Agreed. Noah and his wife. We're reading down here for one to one to see. Noah and his wife. The 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 presenter here in this meme says, I combine the ancient allegory with today's genetic ladder that shows how all the earth's races descended from our people. Or let's say like this, all the races or all the different ethnicities descended by and large. I say by and large because there's some other things. There is some kind of alien thing that comes into the mix. 
let's not let's not bemuse ourselves that it did not but by and large yes by and large all the other races so to speak or nationalities and ethnicities descend from black roots let's just put it like that black roots right now in speaking about the origins right the origins you know, speaking about the origins in the continent, yes, the origins we can point to origination out of the continent that's called Africa, right? But we also, as black people, ancient black people, and even for this reasoning, you know, linking with Ham or Ham or Kem or Kemet or Kush or Kushitic, we also have our influence in actual ancient history. In ancient times, not just on the so-called Africa side of it, but also in the so-called Middle East and also in that so-called Babylon or that eastern region, right, that is known as like Assyria, Sumer, uh, Kalna, Babylon, Erech, Akkad, over in that region too, because even the Bible tells us Right, that that son of Cush, son of Ham, that that son of that Nimrod, right, established a kingdom out in that region. So even right there, it shows a connection that when we talk about Cush, right, talk about Cush, it says that Nimrod, who was Nimrod? This is why we did that video on Nimrod. Right? Because many things are blamed on Nimrod because Nimrod was an obvious example, right? especially to many of the Europeans, of a black man. Of a black man. This is why Nimrod, in our estimation based on the information, this is why he was demonized. Right? And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before Jehovah. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Jehovah. Now, not to get into the racism that has crept up into Judaism and to some of the interpretations, where it says before the Lord, in other places, this is looked at as a positive thing before the Lord. Where he says that Abraham walked before me and before the Lord. And and we'll, if you look at that phrase before the Lord, it is thought in a positive thing. This meant that one had some sort of God knowledge, true God knowledge or God relationship. But in the white Christianity and, and white Judaism and in the actual books, we see the racism creep in into their hermeneutic or their interpretation. Where they said in Nimrod's case, it meant that he was bad and he was evil. And then they try to say that Nimrod is the one that did the Tower of Babel. When nowhere in that narrative or any of the other, some might say extra or pseudepigraphal books like the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jubilees, nowhere does it mention right, that Nimrod had anything to do with the Tower of Babel. And note this right here. The scripture, in the scripture, the Hebrew scriptures, we're not shy to call a spade a spade, so to speak. So it's interesting that we get Nimrod in chapter 10 of Genesis, and then we get the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel speaks that the children of Noah, many of the children, whether they were descendants of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, they all got together to do this thing. They all, and the, we don't see where they had any leader. See, we see Nimrod starts out his kingdom. We say that Nimrod, right, started out his kingdom before the Tower of Babel or after the scattering and dispersion. Before or after. But if he was the one to be a part of the Tower of Babel, then the question is, why isn't his name expressly expressed? It would mention him right there. We see where oracles of Jah or elsewhere is very specific to name who's who, right? So we dismiss that right there. I know this is a little bit of ways from the point, but these all are connected points. Because if we never did believe that Noah's three sons, one was white, one was black, and one was either Asian or one was gray. If we never believed one was white, black, and gray, one man and one woman have three sons, and one is a white man, one is a black man, and one is a little in between. 
I mean, who, who believes that? This is what the European in his counterfeit Christianity and, you know, whitewashed Christianity and even among many of the European Jews. So we can see how the racism, right, or, or the bias, or as we would say, the bad mind, how it crept in even to religious interpretation of things that we have begun to believe as being true. But then when we examine the evidence, we examine the evidence, we see the features amongst black people, right? Even many ancient peoples who have very strong bloodlines, who have made it and, you know, made it into their own people over, you know, there's still a lot of tribes that have very strong genealogies, you know, not, not as many as there were, but there still are a few tribes that can trace their lineages, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years before. Now, for us, there are some broken branches, yes, but for many other peoples, they can do that, and many other black peoples, they can do that, right? Even when you look at Ethiopian features, in fact, there's this thing, it's a video out there where they call the Ethiopians, and the Ethiopians are the darkest-skinned Caucasians. But then when we look at the Caucasians, the real Caucasians, you know, we call white people Caucasian, but that's a pseudo. The real Caucasians are different than white people. Right, are different than white people. We've seen these pictures of the Caucasians, what they call Caucasian. They're like white people who have woolly hair. I mean, woolly Afro hair. See, that goes to prove my point. We're talking about the Indo-European and that the white man, right, comes from the black man. And biblically speaking, the white man's connection to the ancient, we could say, black man Right, of biblical antiquity is through Ham, generally speaking. Never wonder why they have Buckingham Palace, Ham this, Ham that. They really use this Ham term on a lot of things that have significance. If you think about it for a moment, Buckingham, New Hampshire, the Hamptons, you know, they use that term. And is it just ironic that they use that particular terminology? And then now with Canaan. I was watching a, a video, it's World at War, and, no, not World at War, it was the next one. I watched that, but there was the next one. It was uh, Oliver Stone's Untold History of the United States, right? And there was one episode where this guy, Henry, Henry Wallace, he was the vice president at one time for Roosevelt, and he was more of like a, a free thinker, you know? He was more of one that we will say it was like a, a good or a better white man right he wasn't really he spoke against a lot of that racism stuff and he basically called a spade a spade so to speak right and white racism and bias what it was as well and immediately he became like kind of an outcast right because he was about the real peoples you know and he was studying like you know eastern teaching the eastern philosophy so forth and so on anyway he made a speech and he said that America is not to dominate the world and do all these things, but we are to be, you know, we, the European Anglo-American nations are supposed to be the servant of humanity, the servant. I thought it was so interesting. I've heard a lot of other European and white people say that, how they were supposed to be the servant. They're speaking about European and Anglo, even American culture as supposed to serve Humanity. I know some of you are thinking about that Twilight Zone episode to serve humanity. That's a reason in there too. But to serve humanity. Doesn't it say that about Canaan? Doesn't it say that about Canaan? Now these are different kind of, I'll say a little speculation. But even in the speculation there's some things accurate. There's some accuracies. Now many people believe that the so-called white man right, comes from Japheth. Because Japheth's um, nations or territories, also Japheth is called like the Isles of the Gentiles and because of the use of the Gentiles. What most people don't recognize in the Hebrew Bible, if you're not of Israel, right? Israel, right, is the distinction between whether you are Gentile. Gentile basically just means nations, other nations. So Israel is called a Goy, Kadosh Goy, a holy nation. Israel is supposed to be a kingdom of the priesthood and a holy nation. The word, na the word nation is goy. Nations is goyim. 
nations goyim translated as gentiles so because the bible translation says in the isles of the gentiles right and that points like the mediterranean greece and that area over there in the mediterranean and southern europe and because we see white europeans over there today in that region of the world we make believe or we are made to believe that this is who they were in ancient times while archaeology has disabused many ones and ones of that and sometimes people look at the features and say look at this one he has a long nose he must be a white man and we can show you black men and women who have these same features right and then we study the dna we recognize that the the recessive comes from and through the dominant so i'm not saying these charts here are completely accurate because really the so-called white man should really be put into the ham category this is what we're saying that he should be put into the ham category notice these people right here these people some people call the tamahu others then say well they are really the libyans right the libyans but if you know anything about the canaanites the canaanites right had settled along the northern part of africa what's called africa today they settled on the the east and the west sides of mitzrayim of mizrahi they settled on the east and the west sides of mitzrayim i want to point this out to you so even right here when we see the tamahu why right, this people the tamahu right as we study even the tamahu many will say they are libyans and the tamahu according to some comedic scholars will say they are like made white in other words like almost there's an idea where the white man was created or made in a sense it is true but not so much just in the laboratory version that some have taught but made or created through the process called evolution in species the so-called modern white man is a product or byproduct of his descent from the darker right the more dominant gene black people and in particular in the biblical narrative right in the biblical narrative he is a descendant right the so-called white man is a descendant of Cain of, of, of Canaan of Canaan we're going to demonstrate that to you. I know some people are going to talk about some Martin people running around. I saw some videos in the state of Israel where they had some black people saying, I'm a Canaanite, I'm a Canaanite. But we have to understand how the white man has told a lot of people who you are. Like we began to believe that our history only began in slavery over here. Why well, listen to the white man? That's what he taught us. Until we had our own scholars that started to research ancient Bible, ancient Ethiopia, ancient Egypt, ancient Israelites, and started to recognize what our true historical connections are with are many of these peoples, right? And then we started to get out of that box. Like this is another thing that was produced by white men. Let's notice this. It says different racial types as portrayed in ancient Egyptian artwork. And it says this particular artwork dates roughly from 1600 to 2000 BC, right? From 1600 to 2000 BC, or really it should be really from 2000 BC to 1600, since those dates kind of count down, right? And this is roughly around 1400 is the period of the exodus of the real Hebrews and Israelites from Egypt, roughly the period of 1400. So therefore, this particular um, I can't say portrayal of the different races or ethnicities that the Egyptians were familiar with, right? You see where it says yellow? You see where it says yellow, the first man? Now, we can go through this. Notice right here, they have the complexion here is a little bit brown, right? Tan brown. Notice the complexion down here is darker, right? As you go through the different views of how they make, there's a, there's a dispute of lightening up this particular one because many of us say well that's the Hebrew one right there look at the colors the white the red the blue are all Hebrew and Israelite colors we study that in the Torah right and then the fringes as well notice the hair like the hair the hair sack 
it's almost like he has locks like they have locks like when many of i and i you know wear you know these like like hair net like he's wearing a hair net but definitely shows right a full beard too right the precepts of the full beard as well right let's go back to the other one over here right and we go back to this one right here notice which one is white the one that's white is called the tamahu some people tell us that really this is the libyan right that this is the libyan one thing we got to recognize is the connection with the canaanites and the same regions that were occupied by the so-called tamahu and by the libyans you know, people talk about the Phoenicians and all of these other peoples and the and the, the 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 Philistines, the Philistines. We hear the ancient Egyptians talk about the Sea People. Who were these particular people right here? Right? Who were these people? So we have to first begin with their origination as black peoples, and then study the historical evolution in species. Right? The evolution in species. So as we began off right here. Right, so let's go back to this that we had touched on right here. Let's go back to this now. This is like these two pages here, right? So, this right here, let's just read a little bit of this. I think that's 407. This is 406. Now, this is something called the races of mankind, right? Let's get the clearer, the clearest version of it. Now, this one right here says that the Jehovah Witness, right, be a witness. Right? This is from Leviathan 666. Right? But he was saying this under the Ansar law, you know, in uh, Nubian Islamic Hebrews days back then. Be a witness that blacks are not descendants, are descendants. Blacks are descendants from Cush. I want you to check this out, what, what's being said. Are ye not as the children of the Cushites, the B'nai Cushim, or are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians under me, or children of Israel? Be a witness that blacks are descendants from Cush and not Canaan and not Canaan and not Canaan. Now, people might want to dismiss what the Jehovah Witness are saying right here, but I would warn ones first, let's look at what they actually are saying, right? Um, so they actually go through this right here. We could get into some of the details of the, um, of the article. I find it to be, it says, science describes the intricate makeup of the human body. All its different organs are like getting into the kind of a details, right, of the human being. But let's right here, okay, let's go to the next, um, the next exhibit right here, right, the next exhibit right here, okay. Is this the same one right here? Okay, this is, this is the second one right here. The black race from Cush not due to curse on Canaan, whose descendants were white. Now, this is the Jehovah Witness putting this out and then backing it up with research. You know how the Jehovah Witness do? You know, they're kind of like a little bit scientific Christians in their own way, but they'll point out some secular information that basically, in their view, backs up, you know, the biblical or biblical interpretation, right? So this is my first proof. But we're going to go on with proof. We have proof from white people, right? And some of the white people, right, who say that they are really descendants of Canaan, of Canaanites, right? They also say at the same time that the black, the dark-skinned people and the black people were the Hebrews, the Israelites. And in their view, it was the Israelites, these dark-skinned Hebrew people that drove them out of what they believe to be their land. So this is kind of very interesting if we look at the other perspective of it for a moment. So right here it says, this is, this is one of the insights right here where it says, black race from Cush, not due to curse on Canaan, whose descendants were, were, were white. This is actually from something called races, right? Races of mankind. It says that all races due to hereditary factors in original peer traits become prominent due to geographical isolation and intermarriage have you ever noticed that some peoples african and asian peoples who are like 
in some part of the world where they've been alone by themselves how most of the people of that tribe or the people would have very similar they look very similar to one another that kind of brings out this due to geographical isolation and intermarriage it says a race is simply one of those partially isolated gene pools into which the human species came to be divided during and following its early geographical spread roughly one race has developed on each of the five major continental areas of the earth man did indeed um, diverge genetically during this phase of history and we can measure and study the results of this divergence in what remains today of the old geographical races as we would expect divergence appears to be correlated with the degree of isolation when race formation took place on the continents with the bottlenecking of thousands of populations and isolated gene pools all over the world the gene frequency differences we now see were established the paradox which faces us is that each group of humans appears to be externally different yet underneath these differences there is fundamental similarity now this is from something called hereditary heredity and human life by hampton l carson columbia university press new york london 1963 page 151 154 162 163 right and then it goes over here right to mention something that we should be familiar with genesis 10 and 6 the sons of ham were cush mizraim fut and canaan Genesis 9 25 at this no Noah said right curse be Canaan and Genesis 10 15 to 18 Canaan became father to Sidon his firstborn in Heth and the Jebusite and the Amorite and the Gergashite and the Hivite and the Archite and the Sinai and the Arvadite and the Zemorite and the Hamathite and afterward it says what and afterward the families of the Canaanite were scattered right or some say some translations say spread abroad right genesis 10 and 7 the sons of cush were seba havila sab sabta rama and sabteka people of one nationality or skin color not better than others and we will uh, uh, agree with that no nation is above any other nation as the teaching of the king of kings Kadamawi Hadassah says with the exception of the kingdom of the Lord exception of the kingdom of God right and that basically would say with the exception of the true beta Israel the true Israelites and we'll pick up on that much more right now Romans okay yeah Romans goes into it and then they bring out these verses right here because what they're trying to say right here of course is that these racial theories right have been let's go over here these racial theories have already been uh, debunked right these racial theories that basically say so the white man wanted to make us believe that we were of the Canaanites right and many black people do believe that we are of the Canaanites I just want to say that on the record there are many black people who do believe right that we are of the Canaanites right but the truth of the matter is that the white man the so-called white man is a descendant of Ham is the white man a Hamite according to his biblical descent yes but specifically he is a Canaanite and we're going to present some of the other um, exhibits this is just from the Jehovah Witness um, a reference to certain scientific and biblical information we found it to be very interesting that they would actually say this don't you think so right whose descendants were white and then we find that some of the best of their leaders and other people that always have been trying to remind the European the Anglo-American that the role of like England and America was supposed to be to serve right to serve 
And we know that if they were of that mind, that the European can be, in a sense, right now, the science, the technology, and the system of things is basically things that he has, he has built up, even with our labor and our mind, our science and our tech, but he has created this particular system or is running this particular system that's a global world system that whether we totally like it or not, it does serve humanity, right? It does serve humanity. But we always seem to find that where things can benefit people, like new science and new technology, some evil spirit mentality comes in that even these things that can help people are used to harm people. Now, you know, that which can help people, right? Instead of it really helping people, whether it's the greed, the financial, monetary, the greed interest, what creeps in, right? That stops it. So anyway, my brothers and sisters, just to kind of touch on this, we have some more exhibits, but just to get into a reasonment right here, right? We submit to you that the white man is the white man is a Hamite. He's a Hamite through his descendant from Canaan. So what was happening during chattel slavery with them saying that we are under the curse of Ham was them lying, was them lying on us because Ham was never cursed, right? And it was like the pot calling the kettle black, right? Something that they knew. See, this is what proves that they knew more than they were letting even their own people. When they said that, well, the reason why they are dehumanizing us in chattel slavery is because the curse of Ham. Where nowhere in the Bible does it say, curse be Ham. In fact, it basically says of, of Mitzrayim, one of the sons of Ham, Right? It says of Mizraim, it says of Egypt, Egypt is my people. And of another son of Ham, it says, what of that other son of Ham, of Cush? Right? It says, are ye not as the B'nai Cushim, the children of the Ethiopians or the children of the Cushites, unto me, O children of Israel? Right? In Ethiopia or Cush, this man was born there, Im, Cush, Zeulad, Sham in the Hebrew. So that's the point I'm seeking to make right there is that even with Canaan, according to the Bible, being cursed and later on in the Bible, right? Now I'm not saying that the Canaanites were white at the beginning. Don't get it twisted, right? And maybe he was born an albino, maybe he wasn't. Right? But the territories and the peoples that the various different tribes of Canaan, as we're able to accurately trace their movement and progression in history, right? they all move through that Caucasus mountain, that Indo-European mountain, getting into Europe. Many of the Slavs are related to those peoples as well. In fact, one of the tribes of Canaan is the Turkish people. Do you know the Turkish people have been trying to get into the EU, the European Union? And you know what they have been saying to the Turkish people? They've been saying to the Turkish people that they are not white enough. That's basically the long and short of it. If you follow up on that, they're basically saying that the Turkish people are not white enough. Now people say, well, why would they be saying this about the Turkish people? The Turk Turkey, modern Turkey, is a territory that was known as the Hittite territory. Modern Turkey is the area that was known as the Hittite. The Hittite in the Bible are called Chet. Chet. This is where they got the, the, the different descendants from. You can see where it's like chipped away, where they marred it. Right? I heard Champollion, when he saw what it said of the Tamahu, he was very displeased with it. Right? So I suspect that maybe the first finders of these things did damage things. We suspect that. We cannot prove that at this particular time right here. Right? But yeah, here right here is based on this where they reconstructed. Right? You can see how it's heavily damaged. Right? It's heavily damaged. Remember, these things were hidden in tombs and everything. 
and basically were shielded off for a large part from grave robbers, although they might blame grave robbers. But then again, the very Europeans and others who have been digging up, they basically are archaeological grave robbers. Right? So we just want to show some of this right here. Here is like a kind of a, a drawing of what it would look like and they're studying it, you know, or maybe it was made before they damaged it. I mean, look at this right here. Look at this. I want to show you this right here. We talk about Esau and Jacob. This is the Esau and Jacob from the ancient view. Now, you could get into that modern goofy stuff, but from the ancient view, this is basically a Esau and a Jacob. Right? If Esau was redder, right? Remember, he's still a black man. He's come from that black seed. This is what he would look like. You see the similarities between him right here, the one with the red hair, right? And and this one right here, the one with the fringes. See both of them wear fringes. That's Esau and Jacob. There's your Esau and Jacob from the ancient world. I mean, Malcolm X was called um red as well. There's a red fox was red. So even in our own black way of looking at the color red and somebody being red, red bone, right? We have those expressions, red bone, right? And we can have a red bone without having any white man. All of this is in the black gene. In other words, from the black gene, every other race or every other ethnicity, right? So this is how they kind of... Notice they always make the one that's the so-called Asiatic with a friend. They always lighten up his complexion. You, you know what I'm saying? They made him as light as the Tamahu. Think about that for a moment. Right? And it's with effect that they do that because they understand who the one with the fringes right there is. Notice how light they made him here. And then we look at this one right here. Look at his complexion right here. If we go to even here, what's left on the monument, right, is much darker than they make him. Right? And then we go over here. You can see the, the you know that's why we put his majesty because majesty in the Ethiopian would actually bring that one out right look at this particular chart right here on the top right here they have him very much more darker skin right darker by comparison and here a little bit lighter so this one right here right here in the corner right there that is the we could say the the Israelite type right and we showed you over here this is the ancient um, the ancient Edomite type, right? The one in red, right? The one in red right there, the Edomite type. So here's where they, they're looking at the wall paintings. Now you can see how severely they marred it. I mean, look how they marred, how they marred this wall painting, right? And if we're correct, this is the tomb of Seti, of Seti the first, right? How they marred it. And then they did their, their pseudo recreation, right? The rendering, look, this rendering here was by Henrik von Minutoli in 1820. That's still during the heydays. Remember, that's before Reconstruction and the end of the Civil War. And for blacks on a technical level, you know, were emancipated or in a, in a, a little more of a freeness. Not full freedom or full freeness, but a little more free. This was 1820. You see, I mean, look how they make the, the Tanesi, the Nubian, what they call the Nubian. Look how they make... The Nubian. Look, 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 look at that right there. Right? Look how they make his face. Look how they make his face. You see the racism in the archaeology. I just want to show you how this is what we have to kind of um, um, sort through. We got to sort through this right here. Right? And the one that is most connected to the European type, the so-called Tamahu, right? this here, it portrays them much better. I had this in a book, my brothers and sisters. And... I had this in a book, an actual book, and when you look at it, it's much clearer like in the actual print book. It's like I could almost make out blue eyes on the Tamahu. The Tamahu is a very light one that has the open kind of tunic and has all the tats, has all the tattoos. Notice that too, right? Now I'm not speaking against ones and ones with, you know, ones and ones that have tattoos. That's a whole other matter, but from a Torah perspective it says not to make any tattoos on ourselves for the dead that's specifically it doesn't say don't make no tattoos but don't make tattoos on oneself for the dead the purpose of it should not be for the dead but you notice that the tamahu the ones that are most clearly connected with the ancient white man quote unquote 
notice notice his 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 culture. He has an open tunic. You know what I mean? Like he's he he he's partly covered, he's partly naked, and he has all these tats. Right? He has all these tattoos. Now we know with with black people, when black people have gotten tattoos, right, especially like even in Africa or other places, they usually are for certain other symbolic purposes. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, we're gonna get into a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the curse of Ham, right? There's no curse of Ham nowhere in the Bible, right? There's no curse of Ham nowhere in the Bible, right? There's no curse of Ham, right? The son of Ham, Canaan. And it's interesting because from the Hebrew perspective, I just want to share this one more point. From the Hebrew perspective, these are some of the tribes of Canaan. From the Hebrew perspective, the Canaanites, they settled and took land that was not their own. According to the ancient Hebrew narrative and the ancient narrative, right, that the Canaanites had settled in land, and we're referring to even the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees as a point of reference, right? The Ethiopic Book of Jubilees, right? That the Canaanites, now some may say it's a latter book, but there are some earlier versions of it which we find to be older than the latter version. That's why we pointed to Ethiopic, right? The Ethiopic Book of Jubilees, it points out the reasonment of the Yehudis and the Jews and the Israelites in BC times, right? Some say it's earlier than the later copies of it, but let's just say it to say that the Canaanites were charged with taking land that was not given to them. People say, why were the Canaanites targeted and the Israelites was told to remove them out of the land? The seven, the seven, there were seven tribes that were to be removed. Remember, there was 11 children of Canaan, but seven of them had settled in the Levant area. And according to the Hebrew perspective, they had settled in land that was not their own. Let me say this right here. Who else does this? Think about this for a moment. Who else historically has invaded land that other people had as their ancestral land, invaded land, right, and taken over, killed off the people and taken land from them. Now, people might say this is what the Israelites did. The Israelites never fulfilled that. You know what I mean? The Israelites never fulfilled that. You know what I mean? They never fulfilled that. You know, only Joshua and David really even waged war, right, but they never fulfilled that. Right? So I'm pointing this out right here because it's interesting to note that the same way we have the Europeans, the Anglo-Europeans, and even you know them going into Africa, going into South Africa, we see what happened in South Africa, we see what happened in America, we see what happened in South America, we see what happened in many of the islands, we see what happened to the Tasmanian people, we see what happened to the Aboriginal people in, in, in South, I mean in, in, in in Australia, that's south, but in, in Australia and everything, this is how you will know them, right? This is how you will know them. So, once again, are the Canaanites white people? Is the white man a Hamite? Is the white man Canaan? We say yes, 